obviously before we go into the gameplay i am going to do a little bit of education here um i'm gonna go through a little bit more of the philosophical side of things so i have my trusty blackboard here and this time sadly i do not have uh my notes pre written up sadly um but that what that's what makes it fun right so generally speaking we're gonna type it up moira again is not a very complex character so we should be able to pound through this relatively fast uh, and that's exactly what we're gonna do so what are the main things that we're gonna talk about well as always we will talk about her positioning uh, movement is a positioning and movement will kind of go together uh, that will be towards the end we're gonna focus on her kit actually first so we're gonna focus on when you should right click which is her damage source and when you should left click which is her healing source so damage versus healing that's the first point that we're gonna go through today so we're gonna do it like this because I actually liked it better when I did different colors so let's do pink with this perfect so damaging versus healing um, let's talk about healing first as a subtopic here. Why would you heal? What does healing do? Um, how should you look to heal? Well, again, kind of talking about it a little bit. A lot of people think about with healing is that you just continuously press the button. Um, or you continuously press left click, right? But realistically, what I'm going to tell you is it depends on the situation that you are in at that current time, right? And it depends on your healing resource. So consistently healing we're gonna get that out of the brain right now what we're gonna focus on is three things to determine or a few things to determine healing when should I continuously heal when should I tap the heal instead um, what do I have to keep in mind with the resource bar so with her healing resource the thing that you need to know is you got to keep an account when it's quarter slash halfway so what do I mean by when it's quarter slash halfway? Well, when it's quarter or halfway, a big thing that you kind of need to know is, well, when it's halfway, I only have half my healing left, which means I need to make sure that if I'm going to consistently spam it, there's something to combine with it. So do I have my, is my Lucio amping heal so that I don't have to heal as much? Does my, is my orb going out healing? Does that mean I can kind of tap instead? Or do I have to keep going, right? And again, this is where it comes into understanding the resource bar. Because it's not just going to mean with you for terms of when you should tap, when you should not tap. It also means when you should throw your orb. And we will talk about the orb a little bit more. But again, focusing right now on the damage for healing. Resource bar is very important. You need to pay attention to it. Um, if you don't pay attention to it, then you will struggle quite a bit. So in terms of tapping versus not tapping, so tapping uh, the heal button, we need to understand that when we're tapping the heal button, what are we looking for specifically? Well, HP of our team, right? So we'll do it like this. HP of team um, slash individual plus resource bar. You know what, we're going to do... We're going to actually do it like this instead. I'm going to put the writing here. We're going to do... We're going to write it like this instead. Tapping versus continuous. We're going to... Whoa. That erased too much. What? It erased all of it. No. It's not what I want. Boo. Uh, okay, that's fine. I'm trying to think how I do this then. Ah, stupid thing. I hate this. Okay. So, like I said, we'll look at healing as subtopic. Whoop. Uh, healing. Continuous first tapping uh, what else did I want to do resource bar 
halfway. Quarter points. Okay. So, this is a better way to do it. Thoughts were a bit conjumbled, but I think this is the best way. So, he continuously healing versus tapping. A few things to look at to know when we should continuously heal and when we should be tapping. Resource bar, as I talked about, I'm not going to go through that again. The other thing to keep in mind with this, right, is your teams slash teammates Ooh. HP. So, low versus high. So, if they're above the half HP mark, so let's say that they're relatively high HP still, you need to understand that Mario healing isn't just, they get a specific amount, right? They get healing over time, right? So, you don't want to waste a lot of your healing during this point. You want to make sure that if you're consistently tapping, it's because a certain amount of damage is coming out on your teammates, which is making their HP low, right? Or, if they're hiding behind cover, why are you spamming that heal button? You should be tapping that. Because the longer you hold it down, the more resource, the more your resource bar goes down, right? So this is why I say pay attention to your teammates or your team's HP as a whole. Because if they aren't even that low and you're holding down, you're probably wasting a good chunk of that resource bar. Again, a lot of this comes down to resource management, specifically for Moira with her healing. Last thing I think that's important that I kind of talked about a little bit, but what other healing is going out? Amp, orb, etc. So, what do I mean by what other healing is going out? I, I'm talking about amp heals, I'm talking about Mora orb itself. When I say etc, there are other things that you can keep in mind with this, right? If Mora is alting herself, right, you obviously cannot utilize your healing. Um, but that, in a way, is you can use a lot of your healing resource at that time. You could probably continuously heal, then look to alt afterwards once your bar is down. Because it will recover your bar as you're alting, right? Another way to kind of think about it too is Lucio. If Lucio alts down and there's a barrier there, well, you don't really need to spam healing at that point. You can probably look to save that resource until the barrier has fully been extinguished from a certain either teammate or from your entire team so that you can start healing a little bit more. So, I talked about healing. Let's go to the subtopic of damage. Um, damage is a very easy one to kind of talk about. Again, a lot of this with Moira is very simple. Like I said, it's in the fine details that we need to look at. Healing is one of those fine details. Damage is a little bit more of those fine details. So, simple kind of way to look at it. In brackets, we'll say, when should I uh, damage? Right? Because like I said, everyone knows Mora is more of the healing type of character. So, you need to determine when is it the right time to do damage. Because Mora damage isn't incredibly large. Uh, it's easier to hit, but again, Mora damage is very much more so to do that resource bar management. So, when should I damage as Mora? Well, number one, we talked about the resource bar. It refills your resource bar, right? So... When the resource bar is low, you need to do some damage. Am I saying you need to hold it down until it's full? No. You want to take into account um, trying to think of the best way to put it, but you want to damage just so that you have enough healing to where you can keep your team alive, or you kind of want to jiggle it, right? So you do a bit of damage, heal a little bit. It all depends on your team's um, situation, I guess is the best way for me to put it. And by situation, I mean, do they really desperately need heals at that time? Can you look to increase your resource bar for your healings does that mean that you can do a lot more damage because your team's hp is relatively high at the time being uh is your team's hp quite low that you just need to get a little bit of resource healing and then kind of go from there what is the whole point there right so when else should i be able to damage well the other way i should be able to damage right is again it goes back to this question again what other healing is going out Right, so if you're not going to be healing your team when what other healing is going out, you're going to probably be doing damage at that point. 
Why? Because, again, you're trying to keep your overall arching goal as Moira is to keep that resource bar high for your healing so that you have heals to go back to. Remember, fights can be really long with Moira comp, so you need to keep that resource bar very much in a good spot. Weird. I don't know why that's not showing up. I did hear a beep, though, so I will get to you in a moment. Uh, just give me a few moments. Sorry. Um... That being said, in terms of that, that's a key thing you got to think about with damage. In terms of the rest, um, what's another thing that you got to keep in mind for damage? I think that's the big thing. I think we kind of tackled it or tackled it pretty well. It's not a whole lot, I would say, with regard to damage for ceiling. Um, it's a very simple thing, and it doesn't get super complex. It's just, again, the fine details. So that being said, we're going to go through orb. So, orb. What do we talk about with the orb? Well, when are we healing and when are we not healing, right? So, kind of talk about it a little bit more. I don't know why my feed's not updating. It's so weird. But, uh, healing orb. So, with regard to healing, how much should we heal? How much should we not heal? Healing should be about 90% of what your orb is for. Uh, damage should be maybe like about 10%. And I'm being very generous with the damage because, in my opinion, you should not be doing that much damage orb. So it's like once every few rounds or something like that. So we talked about when should you heal versus when should you damage, the percentage that you should be looking for. Well, let's talk about healing orb, what it kind of brings, right? So we want to toss out healing. Our, instead of saying toss out healing, we'll do it like this. Heal one. So we want to look to he use our heal orb. And uh, again, this is why a lot of the situations you're using it most of the time as healing. Um, you want to use heal orb specifically during these times. So at the start... on resource bar uh, yeah when low HP okay so kind of talk about this a little bit more I have heal when should you use healing? At the start of the fight. Why the start of the fight? If you start it, even though your whole team is full HP, they will eventually take damage during the fight. Which means, if you use your healing orb at the start, eventually what will end up happening is the heal will go out to your team. You'll have to use less of your left click again. You'll be able to keep your resource bar managed. And by the time you might need it again when your resource bar is low, heal orbs up what's the thought of that right so then you'll be able to use it again during the fight and at that point it means that you're going to be able to get maybe two of these out instead of one which means your team should be able to sustain and survive for longer periods of time i won't put it that that should be kind of thought Low on it resource bar. This kind of goes at the start of the fight and when I explained a little bit more. When you're low on your resource bar, that means you have almost no healing left. So that means you have to damage the enemy team in order to get a lot more in your resource bar. So, by being able to have an orb out, that means that you can utilize that time to deal a little bit more damage. Because other healing is going out aside from your primary left click, right? So that means you should be able to farm a little bit of damage. And it allows you to give some sort of healing to your team at the same time, right? Small thing, that's a little bit different. When you are low HP, you can look to use Healing Orb. Let's say that you are getting dove. You have no shift. You're starting to get low HP. Use the Healing Orb on yourself, right? That will help you survive and st or sustain, right? Because think about it. A lot of times in these comps, you'll have Lucio with you. Lucio Amp's not going to cut it. Lucio Healing Aura isn't going to cut it. You might need to use an orb for yourself at that point, right? And that's completely okay. It's just, again, all about making it so that, aside from you obviously living, it's all about you trying to do your best to continuously get that healing down. So then, damage, right? When should I have damage orb out? Well, damage orb should be out when? Um, let's be honest here. Eh... 
I think that's like a hard kind of thing. I think it's better to say it like that. Vantage. Okay, so when should you damage orb? I have brought up that you should damage orb when your team is healthy, so they have high HP, but not just when your team is healthy, but when you have an advantage in the fight. Key thing, you have a number advantage in the fight, right? That is what I mean by um, having an advantage. So why do I say numbers advantage? Well. Let's look at it like this. If it's still 6v6 and your team's still really healthy, that's, again, very, very much so. The fight can still go any way, right? You know that you have a larger advantage when you have a number advantage. So it's a 6v4 at that point. Your team's pretty healthy still. Okay, well, now you can put out the damage orb because most likely you have enough healing to sustain your team. At the same time of that, you probably don't have to worry about saving that heal orb for extra healing or to help with your resource management there, right? So, again, straightforward kind of point. In terms of vaulting, rare situation when you use it to damage comparatively to anything else. When you are alting as Moira, the big thing that you have to keep in mind is, well, will I be able to keep my team healed with my alt while doing damage? Sometimes it can if you're going a fast enough tempo. That's why I said a rare situation. Because sometimes you might say, well, I'm going to heal orb instead because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to sustain my team with this because I want to damage maybe a Pharah in the air. So putting a heal orb out to keep my team alive on the ground while I deal with the Pharah in the air with my coalescence, it helps them stay healthy. And at the same time, it allows me to do my own thing with the coalescence. Whereas you using your coal for your team it might allow you to be able to be more loose with your orb usage. Okay, well, I'm going to be healing my team at the same time of us aggressing together on the same target on the ground. I can heal and deal damage at the same time. I can use that orb a little bit more for damage than compared to healing because when I get out of my ult, I'll have some healing, right? Again, straightforward, nothing crazy. It's more about thinking about the orb usage um, for healing-wise. That's the key thing to take from that. When should I heal, right? Okay. That looks a bit funky. We're going to lower that a bit. Okay, there we go. So that adds in fade. All right. So fade. What is the key thing that we got to keep in mind with fade? Well, obviously we want to use it for survive ability, right? We want to use it to as an escape as well if we're in a sticky situation. So escape and survivability are kind of the same thing. other thing that we can kind of think about with this is we want to use it if we can dodge CC, right? Let's say that someone's going for a McCree flash on you. You know it's coming. You can use your shift or your fade to dodge that, right? Survivability and escape. You're low HP. You see a lot of people coming to you. You can fade to a safe position or you can fade to avoid damage. You just have to be careful when you use the fade, right? So what's some key points that I can kind of tell you with this? Well, number one, Let's make sure that when we're using fade, we have escape route. I like to call it an escape route. Um, it's all about just knowing where you're going to go afterwards. So once your fade is gone, that means it's on cooldown for a fairly lengthy time. So that means you need to understand when you use your fade, where are you going to go to? Are you going to go into your team so that your team can support you more easily? Are you going to go in an area maybe farther away from the enemy team and your team so that you can kind of reposition yourself in a safe way, right? Are you going to go behind yourself more? Are you going to try to create more distance from you and the enemy team, which in turn might create more distance from your team, right? But there might be terrain behind there. Again, you need to know what you're going to do after you use that fade because then you're on your own. You're at the mercy of your team to help you. That being said, last thing to kind of say with fade, right? Aside from the survivability escape, again, the general thoughts, dodging CC, right? Making sure you have an escape route.
key key thing to say here you do not want to look to use this fade as a way to go for a faster rotation or anything along those lines fade is used in fights as your only escape your only way that you can be self-sufficient kind of in a way so if you use fade before the fight even starts it's going to be really awkward for you because then at that point you're not going to be able to do what you want to do right and that is an issue you need to make sure that with those fades you are able to have it for your own survivability right not just so that you can use it so that you can start a fight earlier or something along those lines because a lot can go wrong in these fights and if teams know you have no fight they won't hesitate to fight holy cow that scared me okay i have been ignoring my notifications i'm going to quickly just take a look at them uh and kind of go from there amir thank you for the prime dude i i apologize for being a little bit late with that but i appreciate you man uh thank you for the support Cass, thank you for the raid. I appreciate the raid. Hopefully your stream has been going well, man. Nice to see you uh, streaming again and everything like that. Hopefully you've been keeping well, Cass. Um, Mid-fight damage orb is OP, no? It depends on your team's HP, I would say, Toad. If you if your team is low at that point, and in my opinion, low is like below half HP or half HP, if multiple members are around that kind of HP level, it is much better to use the healing orb to keep them alive than it is to throw a damage orb out to try to kill or to keep somebody low. Cass, thank you for the sub, uh, especially with your prime. I appreciate that, man. Um, didn't have to do that, but thank you very much. I've been pretty good. Should return to Amer the Americas soon. Ooh, some eyes over there. Returning to the Americas, he says. Interesting, interesting. I'm very excited to hear a lot more about that. Um, I really hope that it's what I it's it is what I think it is. And if that's well, I don't know why I was doing that. If that is the case, congratulations. Um, if not, I will visit you in Americas hopefully this time around compared to last time. Um, I was really sad that I didn't get to visit you last time. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. Um, where am I here? What am I looking for? Oh, yes, that's right. I just quickly want to make sure that I spell coalescence right because I'm... A, a twat and I don't really know how to spell properly okay so we'll do it like that boom boom okay we're good I can go back to blackboard perfect okay so Mara alt or coalescence right that's a big thing Whatever. Big thing to keep in mind for Moira, it's a very important ability to kind of understand, specifically because it's our ultimate, right? But aside from her ultimate, it's a very important ability, right? And the reason I say it's an important ability is because aside from being able to heal and deal damage at the same time, um, it can be a powerful tool that allows you to, I would say in a way, uh, turn the tables of the fight whether it's because you're low HP or low healing resource and you can just tap it instantly so that you can do some more healing and damage it's a very good resource in terms of if there's a air threat in the air right so we gotta think about a lot of different things there gotta run thank you Cass appreciate it again nice seeing you nice talking for a little bit hopefully you uh, have fun with whatever you're doing but going back to coalescence, sorry, real quick. With regard to the coalescence, big, big thing to kind of keep in mind here. Uh, there's two uses for it, right? So instead of doing two uses, I'll just do it like that. The two uses, usages, sorry, is healing, damage, obviously, right? So we'll look at the healing aspect because a lot of the time it'll be healing and damage. It won't just be damage. So when would we use this? Well looking to rush an enemy target on the ground right but the other way we need to think about this is how and when specifically do we want to use the coalescence here i've talked about one of the ways that you can utilize coalescence is low low resource bar pop out right that is one way that i've talked about it Pow. 
passively passively can gain juice the other way you can look at it is like this right when your coalesces or coalesces when your are alting i'm not using that word ever again um a way that you can kind of think about this as well right is all right i'm using my coalescence we can use it at the start of the fight right and this the reason i say that is because you can look to manage um, you can look to have your resource bar full at that point. Um, so when you're done with your coalescence at that point, you are able to still f heal quite a bit and you are already healing your team at that point. Second thing to keep in mind is you're just mainly using it for damage, right? So I kind of talked about this a little bit more. Well, damage, what do you mean damage? A lot of the time, this is specifically for air targets. Um, air targets, if you don't have a hit scan, are almost close to impossible, obviously, to deal a lot of damage to. You can also combine this with a diva. You can combine this with a lot of different other variables as well, right? Let's say for whatever reason you have a Moira Zen, you could have a Discord in, you could have a Coalescence going on to somebody in the air, they instantly will go, go down, right? Uh, a lot of the times the combination will just be your Coalescence and a Diva flying at the person in the air, specifically like a Pharah or an Echo. So again, air targets, um, looking to... Instead of saying looking to, I'll just say... Can combined, can combine with other abilities slash heroes solo with alt solo kill can combine with other abilities slash heroes. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can think about with coalescence. I think the only other thing I would say is like just as like a note kind of thing. Keep in mind to use healing orb for team. And again, this is going back to the point of you're using your alt to specifically damage someone at that point. You're not using it for healing in mind. Maybe you'll be able to get a quarter of your coalescence usage, usage sorry, to heal your team. But again, the main usage at that point is to damage players. It's not for anything else. So you got to make sure that you're using that orb specifically to heal your team while you're having your coalescence directed in a different direction from your team, right? Um... So then I'll talk about positioning a little bit and kind of go from there. So I'm not going to talk too much about movement because like I said, I'm going to put them together and instead of putting it down there, I'm going to put it up here to the side, positioning slash movement. If you guys know me, usually I have movement and positioning around kind of the same area, but this time I decided that it's probably better to do positioning and movement together because again, Moira is a very again simplistic character it's in the details and most of the time her movement is quite simple to kind of grasp i would say so what do we have to keep in mind so we can start this with positioning first um so what do what do you need to know about her positioning specifically well again we're going to go with start and mid fight positioning kind of thing so start position is you want to be a shift distance away from your team. Gonna move this real quick. Boom. Then we'll start typing right there. So what do I mean by shift distance away? Your shift, the range or max range, middle range of your shift, that's how far you want to be from your main team. Why? Because it will easily allow you to shift into your team so your team can support you or you can easily look to walk to your team at that point. Again, shift distance is a decently far range, but walking wise, if you compare the two, it's about max, max to mid range of a shift is about one to two seconds worth of walking comparatively to obviously just using your shift so it isn't that far and your heal range isn't that uh short it, it is a decently far heal range again you can use your orb as well which has no range drop off it kind of just floats around the map right 
So starting position, the reason why you're starting about a shift distance away is because you want to make it so that you're not an easy target to get on right off the bat from the enemy team. Whether they're running a dive, whether they're running a fair composition, whether they're running a brawl, if you're too close to your team at the start, that means that your shift will get forced easy and if you have your shift forced easily that means you have no again escape tool you have no way to kind of know where to go you can't stay in these aggressive fights for a longer period of time which is a big no no you need to keep that as long as you humanly possibly can so start position we kind of understand how about the mid to end position well mid to end position well we should be looking We should be looking to play with the team. Why am I saying this now? Well, mid to end, you're talking about the at the start, you don't want your shift force. So why at the mid to end fight, do you want to play with your team now? Why are you kind of being contradictory? Well, the reason I'm being... Con like kind of going against what I said at the start is because towards the mid to end fight majority of the enemy team has utilized their resources at the start of that fight which means it's safer for you to walk up to, into your team remember I always say this with supports it's safer to run towards your team most of the time than it is to run away from your team so then aside from just that if you are winning the fight in the mid fight you play in your team you're able to get that healing down really well you're going to be in a safe position because you're playing in your team it's going to be very hard to force that shift from uh the enemy team even if you're down in a fight and you still have your shift you need to make sure that you're close enough to your team if the fight goes out of your kind of range out of your los then you have to move with your team at that point right because it's not like you're an anna you can stick in the back and start healing people you need to walk up because your healing is an infinite range your healing is a short range it's limited so again you always want to kind of look to play with your team the star is always a little bit further away again about a shift distance so that you can kind of manage your positioning a little bit better so that you don't get any of your resources forced early and you don't die early to say the least and then in the mid to end that's when you look to play with your team support them more closely so movement movement is i would say an easier point to kind of do or get across i would say I don't know why it's going like that. That's weird. Okay. We're going to do right there. So movement is not a hard thing to kind of figure out here. I talked about star. I start talked about end position. You should be looking specifically to play with team. See where core is fighting. You want to see where your team is. You want to move with your team. You want to play with your team. So your movement should always be, and again, movement happens in the mid to end fight, should always be where your team is. Because depending on where your team is, that will allow you to get the most value, fight with your core, do what you need to do with your core, right? Be valuable. So wherever your core team is moving, so majority of the members of your team, right? That is where you want to move. That's where you want to go. That is most of the time the safer place to play, right? Okay, that being said, this is Moira in a nutshell. Again, a little bit of a simpler character. I talked about a lot of simple things, I would say. The key things that we're going to look at is that resource bar in terms of the healing, how often fade is used, and the orb usage. I cannot, cannot say enough orb usage. That is a large thing or the big three things we will look at with Moira players because the rest, in my opinion, are very self-explanatory. It's not a very difficult character, again, to grasp. It's in the details, specifically with the orb, resource bar management, and the fade usage. That being said, let's close off this screen. Let's close this off. Let's look to get into some gameplay footage here now. And we're going to start off by looking at Fielder at this round of Ilios against Shanghai. So you guys know the drill. Um, oh, I gotta unmute this now. Um, you guys know the drill for me. I'm not going to stop unless I feel like I really need to stop. Aside from that, I'm gonna kind of keep going and just go at a good pace sort of thing. Uh, thoughts on flank coal? Do not think flank coal is a very good idea. Uh, I'd rather use it to support my team. Flank coal. If you're flanking, that means you can't heal your team with that coal essence. So, again, you're not doing your primary job as Moira, which is being the main healing source. Okay, at the start he used his fade. 
Nothing terrible there. Like, it's before the team is in. You see him playing very tight to his team right now. Not seeing a lot of healing. He sees his team's not really low, right? This variation with ball is highly mobile, so he can move around quite a lot. Tossed out an orb a little bit ago. Again, you see him continuously hold it, but tap more. Heal orb goes out, that's good. Even though his team is full HP, he's concerned about how much damage they might take. The orb missed going into that room, but you see that he's concerned about the amount of damage they're going to take, so he's consistently looking to heal. He tosses a heal orb out himself to keep himself alive there, and he uses the right click to continuously damage. He still has a shift. You see that he's waiting until he's about half HP to utilize that shift. That's because he knows that he can survive with his right click damage, and that he's not in any danger. Uh, fights, I guess, a little bit over, but I wouldn't have shifted into there. That shift made him a little bit vulnerable if Shanghai decided to chase after him. But I guess he felt pretty confident. But again, you're already seeing. Hasn't tossed out, I'm pretty sure, a single damage orb. He might have tossed it out at the start. Aside from the start, have seen only heal orbs. You see, he's already close to coalescence. He hasn't really died at all. Again, he's using that right click to sustain himself, keep him alive. He's managing this heal resource bar pretty well. I expect him to potentially toss out a heal orb soon and then alt. Not anymore. Oh, okay. Well, that... I don't really like that at all. Um, yeah, that was not good. <laughs> I, I thought he would hold his alt at that point until a little bit after. I guess they thought that they had a potential to kill somebody with that fearless knockup. He decided to shift in. He decided to look to use his coalescence to try to deal some damage to him and kill him, I guess. Um, coalescence does not do that much damage. So, in my opinion, they, he kind of just wasted a coalescence there. Um, I would like to see a little bit more... Uh, so far, I actually am okay with this so far. So he's forced to use the shift because of the slam from Fate there. And again, you see what happens there. I'm going to go back a little bit. We're going to look at it again. But when he used the shift, you can tell he used the shift because he was scared he was going to get knocked up and potentially assassinated. Um, he had an orb he could have used. He had Hanbin, who was beside him, that could potentially have matrixed him, right? But he was so scared that he would get knocked up and that he would be put in a poor position that he shifted on the point. And the thing I want to look at is he shifts, but look where he ends up shifting, right? He shifts in a position that his team can't help him. His team gets EMP'd, right? His team will not be able to assist him in that area. So his pathing when he was using his shift wasn't really thought of. He didn't have an escape plan with this uh, shift. And again, it, it sucks. He got EMP'd. He can't use orbs to sustain himself and keep him alive. But... He also put himself in a very awkward position from his team helping him, right? That was a good minefield into an EMP to be fair from Shanghai, but again, instead of I would have rather shifted backwards to be honest and been stuck in that room as a Moira comparatively to go forward onto the point. Um, especially when he heard the ball Sam go through, he knows his team's gonna be kinda stuck at that chokeway. So it's better for you to stay kinda behind. Again. Don't want to go too far ahead. Because if you do, you're going to be put in awkward positions where you have to use that shift early. Which you don't want to do, right? Okay, tapped it a little bit. He's going to let it heal up a little bit passively. He's tapping his heal a little bit too much in my opinion. Uh, you don't have to be continuously healing there. You're already at half. That's not good. I feel like he's healing too much in terms of, like, see how he's consistently healing or when he has orb out, he's just tossing out heals. He shouldn't be doing that. He should be either tapping or he should be just letting his heal orb do the work with amp. Because if he allows for that to happen, that means that he'll have more healing resource and he won't be uh, potentially in an awkward position later on in the fight when he has low healing. In terms of his positioning again and, and everything... I'm okay with the shift forward there. Perhaps a new methodology is required. Not fully, but it's not terrible, right? I want him to have a better escape plan with his shift, though. I feel like a lot of the time when he's shifting, he's shifting into positions in these fights that are very... Not just awkward for himself, but where no one's really trying to help him. I don't see him around Jexe. Don't see him around Hanbin. I need him to be around people more with those shift usages, right?
Okay. I'm just gonna go back because I just missed a little bit of that there. Get into position. Speed up a little bit. Do 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 do. All right. So we see that he's trying to consistently heal. Sparkle, get Sparkle out. He was able to get Sparkle out. Again, he shifts. The way he shifts was he, instead of shifting towards the back left or into Cage, he shifts into the enemy Mega. That causes him to be completely isolated from his team. No one can help him. He doesn't even have any resources to keep himself alive. That's how he goes down there, right? Again, it's super important you use your shift. You have that escape plan. Right now, Fielder is not having that escape plan. He bailed out Sparkle, yes, but... I'd rather Sparkle die in that fight than my main healer die. Because if my main healer is going to die, that means that we're likely not going to win that fight, right? Alright. OT, they have a cool essence and a beat to work with. Round's already over. They couldn't touch. General, thoughts about Fielder's play so far? I think it wasn't that bad. I think that my biggest beef with him was his shift usage. I think his orb wasn't that bad either. Positioning was a bit rocky sometimes, but overall it wasn't bad. He did do, even though I was talking about his health resource management and not just his health resource management, but I also talked about his shift usage or his orb usage, right? And him not tapping and continuously doing it most of the time. It wasn't bad. I never saw him run out of juice, which is really important. I, I should never see a Moira for the life of me when I watch this kind of composition or even the ball variation run out of juice if she runs out of juice she has no resource left in that healing kind of spot you're doing something wrong you're not managing your healing properly so you're not tapping you're continuously doing something you're not using your ore properly etc etc okay so we already see that Violet is tapping he uses his shift to rotate I'm okay with that shift usage only because his team isn't committing anywhere. You see his team is just holding this position. If they were rotating, I would have been really skeptical about that shift, but his team's just chilling. Again, you see him tapping. He hasn't used his orb at all. Now he tosses out the healing orb. Glitzer seems to go down. Ooh, okay. That... He was half HP with his healing. Not the end of the world. He looked to get onto point. He gets onto point. He seems very jumpy with his shift usage. He He's shifting in these rotations very early. I would have rather him orbed and walked with the amp, to be honest with you. Okay, that orb was not a good orb placement right there. He orbed, super jumped in. They have no more healing at that point, right? And you see what happens as I was talking about with that orb, right? Ah, oh, what are you doing, Glister? Okay, we need to go back just a little bit here. We're gonna look a little bit more in terms of just like Glister in this whole sequence. Not this sequence, but the next sequence. And a big thing that I kind of want to talk about with this sequence, right? And I'm gonna slow it down to 0.75 here, is how he uses a seal orb, the position he's in after his shift, the position that he continuously goes in, right? So we see that they're low. He sees, since they're low, that he was going to orb there. Seems like there was miscommunication between his team. He saw his tank's half HP. He thought that orb would be a good kind of thing to use here. Super decides to jump. Orb is wasted. You see how he has a little bit less, or a little bit more than half of his healing. Look what ends up happening now that he has to heal Super and Choi and he has no orb. He has to hold the heal down because if he doesn't, people are going to die. He has held the heal down. Now look at his resource bar or his juice it's super low he's not going to be able to heal anyone that means he's going to have to be in a position to damage now and you see that he's holding out the damage trying to get a little bit of healing they're right now all outside a point so he's not able to get the healing or the the damage down so he can get more of his resource bar or more juice so that he can heal more right so he decides to shift into his team. He puts an orb into Glister here. Do I like that shift? No. Why? He had no sort of threat coming at him. Yes, there was a Pharaoh on his left-hand side, but why are you shifting into the middle of your team when you could just walk there? You could walk and hug that right wall. Somebody by your team will be there. If you end up getting pressured and low or half HP, you can utilize that shift, but you still have an orb to use, not just for your team, but for you specifically as well. 
we see that he he's low HP he's trying to manage the ceiling but again, the other issue that it comes in, he has no shift now. It's very dangerous to go off on your own. You look to see who's near him, it's just Troy in a mini. Troy in mini is not going to do anything. He should be going towards point where the rest of his team is. Instead, he's trying to get in a position so that he can deal damage, so he can get healing. He is now isolated. No one can assist him aside from Troy. Jinmu sees that and he just instantly goes to kill him, right? So what do we see there? Orb usage, not really the best. Positioning of orb, not really the best. Shift usage, putting himself in danger and then putting himself in even more danger when he has no shift, right? But something I'd like to add, we talk about how Violet is an aggressive player, right? Like we see here, but the amount of times he's used damage orb over healing orb is very low. He hasn't used damage orb and healing orb that much, right? So... He ends up going down there because he goes through bridge side. He just ends up doing damage. He's not focused on trying to get to his team, try to heal his team. Nero ended up clutching out that fight with an ult. But I would have rather either, number one, saw Glister, or Glister, saw Violet try to shift over actually into the middle and make it to the left side with his team to support his team because a lot of Chengdu's pressure was by that main side, that bridge side. Um, he could have done the far rotation, but I think that would have taken too long. I think just doing a shift over the middle would have been the better source or the better idea for him to do. Okay. He's tapping. We see that he's tapping. He needs to stop tapping because no one's low. No one's really low HP, right? Aura can help with that. He seems really lost where to, pos where to go in position. Okay, he heal orbs out. They go very fast with the coalescence. And he's in another poor position. I don't know what's happening here. Shock seem a little bit disoriented here. So I said, like I said, I want him to be a little bit of a shift distance away, right? I'm looking at this, right? A lot of the time you want to try to look to see where your diva is and kind of play around your diva. You see how he's running around everywhere? Like, I, I don't know where he's looking to heal, who he's looking to heal. He doesn't even know where he's looking himself, it looked like. Coalescence, you don't want to be the first one in. You see how he was the first one in there? You want to play the max range of your Coalescence or mid range of your Coalescence. He was playing to just barrel stuff with his Coalescence. You don't want to do that. You want to stay alive with that Coalescence as long as humanly possible. Again, Violet's aggressive tendencies are being shown on the character. He is using the abilities, in my opinion, the way they should be. Okay, he's just going to go back to spawn. He is using the abilities like he should be. He's using heal orbs more than damage orbs. Like I said, we're not seeing a lot of damage orbs being thrown out, which Violet is a very aggressive player. You'd think maybe he throws more damage orbs out. No, he knows what he has to do. The positioning is the key thing that I'm a little bit concerned about with Violet. It feels like he's putting himself in two aggressive positions as this character. You can't do that. You need to be very careful. He decides to shift for the rotation. He's able to make it through because of that shift. I think it's fine that he used shift there because it is a little bit dangerous. They weren't looking to go too, too fast at that point. So again, not a terrible decision. They look to go back because FT God is already back. He doesn't have orb. He was tapping. Uh, I don't like that shift position. I don't like the end position again. Again, another situation where Violet, he was doing not bad at the start. He tossed an orb, he's tapping his heal, he's trying to manage this resource. I feel like he's tapping it a little bit too much sometimes. He needs to tap less when the heal orb's going out. But the key thing to keep in mind for me specifically with him as well is he needs to shift more towards his team compared to less, less away from his team. Okay. Cool Essence is a little bit better. We see that they look for an engagement on bridge. He is at a decent distance, almost max distance of his coalescence. He's able to survive. He's not part of that kind of disruption from Gaga there. He's able to do healing, maybe not too much damage, but healing for his team, which is the key thing, right? You increase your range of healing with that coalescence there. You're able to keep your team alive and keep them in kind of the fight there. Sick misses. All right, he has orb out. Healing is going well. I don't know what he's healing. He's healing in front of him when no one's in front of him. It's good that he's sticking with Super and he's sticking with Troy here. We see Heal Orb go out. He's tapping. He's dealing damage again. Now he shifted. That was a good shift. He shifted. He went right back into his team instead of going far away from his team. That's a much better position for Violet. I think because of that, Violet is surviving for a longer period of time. 
He decides to shift out of the bomb, utilizes Coalescence a little bit more for a damage-oriented side than healing. He mixes between the two, but I think that shift usage of going out of the team is good because of Jimmu's Barrage. He's able to avoid Jimmu's Barrage, have a Coalescence go down, he's able to keep his team in the fight longer. Good sequence there from Violet this time because he's able to survive for a longer period of time. Healing bar looked quite low there, but he did a good job managing it with his heal orb, managing it with regard to tapping or consistently healing. Key thing I want to point out there was his position positioning with his shift after using it. He was with his team. And you see he's stacking in his team. He's seeing where Super is. He's playing with Super. He's just following the death ball. This is fantastic. Much better towards the end there compared to the beginning. So, I talked about I didn't like the shift usage from Fielder. I'm going to talk about it with Violet. I don't like the shift usage from Violet either. I think they both are quite poor, in my honest opinion. So, to kind of elaborate a little bit more, I'll kind of do it a little bit simply here. They're using the fade for survivability or escape a lot of the time. Sometimes it's to dodge stuff. They're not keeping in mind their escape route, though. They are not keeping in mind what's going to happen after my shift is up they keep putting themselves in no man's land where no one on their team can help them and that is causing them to die very often than not right again as more once your fade is gone you want to play with your team around your team so they can enable you right you don't want to be too far from your team and that's what happened a lot of the time in a lot of the situations with violet and a lot of situations with uh fielder right and as an extra repercussion to that, we'll talk about the heal heal orb here, right? So the time of when they're looking for heal orb is really good from both. And from Violet, we saw it very well when he was low on the resource bar or when it was the start of the fight so he can get another orb out. But the issue of where it came was every time he faded, he faded in an area so that orb wouldn't be in a good position because his mid to end position was right on top of the team. You still want to have a little bit of distance. You want to play with the team, but you want to play so that you're not right on top or you're leading the charge, right? And that is an issue some Mora's have is they will be right on top of the team. They will be leading the charge. You don't want to do that. You want to be still in a somewhat safe position. Remember, you're support. You're not a playmaking support. You're there mainly for healing. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to kind of end the Moira review there. We kind of looked at Violet. We looked at Fielder. 